Liberty Nation. Truth is making a comeback. Hello and welcome to LNTV, a project of LibertyNation.com. And joining me today from the United Kingdom is our managing editor, Mark Angelides. Mark, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Lisa. So you've been acquainted with Tommy Robinson and were in the midst of setting up an interview with him before he was arrested, tried, and found guilty. For what crime, I'm still uncertain. So let's start with what's happening with Tommy Robinson and why is this gaining such traction all over the world? Well, uh, Tommy was uh, doing what he does as a citizen journalist. He, he was out exposing, um, he, let's call it his uh, raisin debtries to uh, expose to the British public the uh, the majority Muslim rape gangs that are sweeping across uh, Britain. It's, they've appeared in multiple cities, uh, hundreds of defendants, um, and it's thought up to one million uh, white British girls have been abused, trafficked, or, or raped. And he uh, has taken it upon himself to expose this because it's really not getting the play in the mainstream media that it should be for what is essentially uh, one of the, the biggest scandals in UK history. Now, Tommy was uh, arrested um, at Leeds Crown Court, uh, and he was arrested, uh, taken to trial, and convicted and sentenced to 13 months, all within the space of four or five hours. Um, now, if you know anything about the British court system, it's an average of 92 to, to 100 days from arrest to actual conviction uh, for almost any crime. So four or five hours, there was clearly a, a lot of political power behind this, let's say. And um, it's well, gaining traction all over the world. Well, how can a reporter be arrested for filming people going in and out of court? Uh, what is the legal basis for that? I assume that is what he was found guilty of. Well, he was originally arrested for breach of the peace, which is a, a hugely wide catch-all term that doesn't need to be applied when actually facing charges. So he was arrested for breaching the peace um, with, for filming on, on uh, outside the court, which um, apparently there were reporting restrictions in place. Now, reporting restrictions apply to some cases, um, and it's usually cases that involve sexual abuse, um, and it's to protect the victims uh, of, of the abuse. But for some bizarre reason, it appears that this was applied to the 29 individuals who are, are accused and in court for sexually abusing, raping, and trafficking scores of children. Um, now, uh, according to, to later reports, um, how, like Tommy was actually charged with contempt of court uh, for talking about the accused names and the, the crimes that they'd been charged with. Um, however, a, a very simple internet search shows that the BBC, uh, I'm sure you all know the BBC, actually published on their BBC website almost three weeks earlier the names, the addresses, um, and the charges of all of the defendants. So I, I fail to see how Tommy was in contempt of a particular court order. But needless to say, as I'm sure you know, it's actually not... Uh, an odd practice to film suspects as they go into court. I mean, we all saw Harvey Weinstein the other day doing his uh, his walk of shame into the court. And I mean, the BBC films suspects as they go into court and uh, journalist uh, associates of mine, photographers, it's their standard job to take pictures and ask questions as people go into court. It's standard uh, that he was uh, arrested convicted and sent to prison within a few hours it is is almost ludicrous um well in the so, yeah. in the u.s we we call that the perp walk uh yes because yeah, wa i was going to call right. it the, the walk of shame or a different one <laughs> yeah yeah um but i i know there was a protest here in the swamp this weekend held in front of the british embassy but protests yes. are now breaking out all over the world uh, are there protests in the UK, and who's involved, and why? Well, 
There are a huge amount of protests taking place in the UK. There are protests today. There were protests yesterday. Uh, they started the very day after uh, Tommy was arrested with thousands of people marching on Whitehall, which is the, the heart of British government, um, and onto the, uh, the Prime Minister's residence, number 10 Downing Street. Uh, and the, the big names are involved. Um, it's not that they necessarily support uh, what Tommy is doing as a citizen journalist, but because it can happen to him, it can happen to them or even us. Um, Raheem Kassam of Breitbart was uh, at the first Tommy march. Uh, there's another coming up on the 9th that will uh, involve the, um, the famous Dutch politician, Geert Wilders. Uh, the new UKIP leader, Gerard Batten, has spoken out very strongly on this. Uh, even Tucker Carlson had a, a spot a couple of days ago with Katie Hopkins on this. It, it is, uh, I mean, people all over the world uh, are involved for the first time in human history because tyranny is being exposed to the whole world. Uh, people are witnessing firsthand through the internet um, what can happen when, when freedoms begin to disappear. And they are scared. I mean, they, they can feel it in their souls that this is not an ending. But it's a beginning and it's a it's a truly frightening wake up call to, to what can happen when um, political persecution does take place. Let me ask you this. Uh, what is going on with the mainstream media in the UK? I mean, you know, they, they should be concerned about this as well. Is there uh, silence from them or is there uh, complicity? Well, um, when he was first arrested, uh, it, it was, we presume it was under a D notice, which is a, a government uh, issued notice that is voluntary, um, but it asked the press not to report uh, on things. Um, and it turns out there was actually what's called a postponement order in place, which meant that they weren't allowed to report on it because it might prejudice proceedings. I, I fail to see how, but um, they, uh, the British press, the media, they do not like Tommy Robinson. They do not like what he represents. Um, in many ways, a lot of people would suggest they, they don't like him because of his class. He's a working class lad. Um, but they're really not focusing on the the sheer, what, what I would consider tyranny of this. They're, they're ignoring it. They're, uh, they're trying to say, well, you know, he was in contempt of court because you're not really supposed to be filming well, these same broadcasters, you know, you can search their sites, uh, their, their back catalogue, and they're filming people on court, you know, walking in and out of courts. Um, they're really not doing themselves any favours because, as you rightly say, this could happen to them very, very easily. If, if they fall the wrong side of, of whatever political persuasion happens to be pulling the levers of power, they could very well end up on the wrong side of it. Um, they need to be coming together on this now, but they're not. Well, it sounds like a little bit of that elitist snobbery. You know, he's the lewd, crude, and low class, and they're sort of above it all. Um, now, you wrote a powerful article on LibertyNation.com, actually on another matter, a similar matter, but the principle still applies here. And you wrote the following, quote, It may be too late for Britain, but not for our American cousins. Will the United States be the last bastion of freedom, surviving only through the tenacity of a constitution that was born in response to tyranny. Do not go gently into the constricting arms of slumber and acceptance. So my question to you is, do you believe it really is too late for Britain? Have they crossed the Rubicon? Yeah, that is a, a, a very keen saying there, have they crossed the Rubicon? Um, you know, I, I, I begin to fear that, that we really have, um, but purely because I see no way to walk back from this, uh, much the same as Caesar when crossing the Rubicon, that there, there's really no way back once you've got uh, the army crossed. Um, they've, uh, they've taken the steps forward, and, and there's no real way other than denying their own legitimacy that they can walk back on this. And so I, I wonder, if it's not in their best interest to, to just proceed full march, full speed to Rome uh, and to, to knock the gates down. Um, but yeah, I do fear that uh, maybe it is too late for Britain, which uh, is a, a real crying shame. 
All right, but at this point, it's not too late for Tommy. So what's next in this hashtag free Tommy Robinson movement? Well, I mean, there's uh, there's going to be a major march on Westminster, the home of British government on Saturday, Saturday the 9th. Uh, the speaker's coming from all over the world. Um, and, and this is great. But the important thing is to get him out of prison as soon as possible. Um, he is in his life is in danger. People are. Uh, people in the House of Lords who are not popular people in the House of Lords, I can assure you, but uh, uh, not popular with the other House, other members of the House of Lords, ha have actually written to the government uh, saying that if Tommy Robinson is murdered or attacked in prison, that they will hold this government directly responsible for that. Um, so the important thing is to get him out. There's a petition that's going around. It's well beyond uh, over half a million signatures already. And the, the government has to debate it in the, ha in the House of Commons if it reaches 100,000. So that's, that's done. Um, but the most important thing um, is what's happening on social media. Uh, people need to keep talking about this. We, we need to not forget what's happening. It's so easy to move on from one scandal to the next. But we need to keep demanding, most importantly, that political persecution is ended. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for your uh, unique perspective on this uh, over in the UK and uh, being acquainted with Tommy Robinson. Uh, before we go, we would love to give you this Liberty Nation. How do I do this? Okay, let's turn it this way. This LibertyNation.com hat. Truth is making a comeback. All you need to do is to go ahead and comment and subscribe. We really need your subscription. For Mark Angelides, I'm Lisa K. Donner. This is another edition of LNTV. Liberty Nation. News and commentary. Minus the propaganda. LibertyNation.com.